well the Naconic friends we're at the end of a, another week almost of uh, our lockdown and uh, still meeting like this uh, virtually and uh, yet we thank God for uh, this way of keeping in contact and indeed of gathering around to worship him. The Lord is omnipresent, he is everywhere, we don't have to be in a church building to worship him and indeed we don't have to be together physically to enjoy fellowship together and so we're going to fellowship together again around God's word tonight. I want to read to you two short passages of scripture, one from the end of Luke's gospel and one from the beginning of Acts. Uh, this is Luke chapter 24 where Jesus says this, uh, where Luke records this uh, of Jesus. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And then the beginning of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 1 at the, the point where Christ was about to leave them. Uh, and we read this, Acts 1 verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Well, Dr. Luke wrote both the Gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. He uh, was uh, very zealous to bring us an accurate record of what happened. And so his writings are really in two parts, a two-part record, the Gospel, uh, its beginnings, uh, and then the Gospel spread throughout the known world. Luke ties the two parts together. He knots the two parts together by homing in on the last conversations that Jesus has with his disciples on earth. The Gospel of Luke uh, gives some details of those conversations held over that meal of fish which he shared with them after showing them his hands and his feet and convincing them that it was really him. He instructs them, uh, opening up their minds to the scriptures and what they teach about the Messiah and the Saviour. Part of that conversation included this command. You shall be my witnesses. And it's this phrase which Luke takes up again, records again on the lips of Jesus in Acts. Just moments really before Jesus was taken up from them into heaven. Again tonight I have a few things just to share with you. Four things tonight. And the first is this. Last words to be our first concern. Christ's last words to be our first concern. Last words are never concerned with trivialities, except on the lips of a fool, of course. What a man says as he's about to leave this earth, and all in it, is almost always of supreme importance um, in his own mind. Now, Jesus was not leaving his followers, of course, because of death. He had conquered death. He was about to assume his rightful place again, uh, his place of glory uh, in heaven with his Father. The disciples were concerned to know if now, or indeed even soon, he was going to inaugurate the kingdom that he had promised. But Jesus declares to them that this really is not to be in the forefront of the attention at this time. Rather, he is to be concerned with what he now speaks of. These last words to his followers were to be their first concern and ours. And he says to them, 
you shall be my witnesses. Now Jesus is not talking about trivialities here, but with that which is of the utmost importance for his followers and for his church. His last words are first concern. Uh, the second thing is this. We see heavenly work to be done on earth. And as Jesus leaves his disciples to return to glory, he was not abandoning them, nor was he leaving them behind in any sense of thoughtfulness, thoughtlessness or uh, an uncaring attitude. God's purpose was to save his people, to call out a bride for his son, Jesus. And that would be accomplished by Christ's followers taking up the challenge of being his witnesses on earth. What is meant by this? What is a witness? Well, in the words of one of my dear friends in Nakani, who's skilled and knowledgeable in these matters, a witness is a person who testifies about facts of which he or she has personal knowledge, about what he or she has seen or heard personally. <clears throat> Furthermore, a good witness is a person who tells facts as they are, without bias or embellishment. Now, think about this. Christ will bring his kingdom plans to completion and to perfection. And he will do it using his disciples as those who will bring his message, his saving message, to a lost world. If you like to put it like this, the doors of heaven will be open to sinners who will be reached by the good witness and testimony of Christ's followers. You see, we have heavenly work to do here on earth. His last words are first concern, heavenly work to be done on earth. The third thing is this. We have here a strengthening promise to address our weakness. It seems to me that Jesus here anticipates a, a very natural reaction to this demanding responsibility to take the gospel message through the world to the end of the earth. How on earth could such a small, despised, minority, motley gathering of not very important people take on such a task? Everything was against them. The repressive presence of the Roman authorities, the opposition and hatred of the Jews, in particular the Jewish authorities, the apparent end of Jesus and his work, at least in the eyes of the common people who had witnessed, many of them had witnessed his crucifixion. And of course, the smallness of the presence uh, of the disciples, the followers of Jesus. So everything was against them. So the Lord really, in a sense, anticipates that here because he prefaces his commission with a strengthening promise. And the promise is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill in them and through them what they could not of themselves achieve. Often we're faced with the seeming impossibility of the task we've been given, reaching the world with the gospel, the vastness of that responsibility, and the blindness of men's minds and the hardness of their hearts. Humanly speaking, it's a mission impossible but not when the Almighty God is at work by His Spirit. So it is in dependence upon Him that we dare to go out with the message of Jesus to a lost and often resistant world. Last words to be our first concern. Heavenly work to be done on earth, a strengthening promise to address our weakness. And finally, I want to share with you the potential price of sharing this gift. And this is one more important issue raised here, the cost involved in following Christ and bearing witness of him. Now, the Greek word for witness has a sermon encapsulated in it, a sermon in a word, if you like. The word is martures, martures, the word from which our English word martyr comes. You get the drift, don't you? Knowing the early history of the church, what is recounted in Acts, and from extra-biblical sources as well. This word, 
became literally true for so many of Christ's followers. They paid the ultimate price for the sake of the gospel. They were martyrs, dying because they faithfully declared his word and resisted every threat, every pressure, every attempt to make them recant and deny their Lord. For many down through the centuries, faithfulness to Christ has demanded this ultimate cost, martyrdom. I recall, and I'm always challenged by the story of Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna, when he was going to his death, really, for his faith. It happened in the middle of the second century AD, and he faced death by burning at the stake. And when they tried to uh, force him to impress upon him his need to recant, to deny his Lord, he said this, Eighty and six years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. What a challenge to us today. We are so often fearful to speak of our Lord, so reluctant, as it were, to climb out of our safe evangelical trenches and engage in battle against unbelief and sin around us. We complain of how difficult, how difficult it is to witness, maybe with some justification. But this is what we are here for. You shall be my witnesses, martyrs, willing to obey the Lord, to take the gospel, whatever it may cost. What a challenge to us today to bring this saving word, the only saving word to a lost world, as martyrs, as witnesses of the Lord Jesus. Let's have a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, fill us afresh with your spirit. And make us willing and ready to witness to the, to the world of you. You are the only way, the only truth and the only life. And through whom alone men and women can be reconciled to God. Make us good and effective witnesses of your saving power. For the glory of Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in again. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you. May he challenge you and me to be good witnesses in these difficult days.